alright so can you hear me now okay so I think uh, we will go back to the first part again alright thank you okay so uh, as we can see the bearing itself uh, is to support the load okay while allowing the relative motions between two elements right so this is a typical type of uh, bearing okay as we have uh, gone through previously where there is a ball inside right you can also found this in your fidgets all right you can see the those kind of uh, ball bearing okay but then uh, when we come to a bigger machines okay then this may not be cost effective all right so there will be a plain type of bearing where you can you have only two uh, elements itself okay without any any things in between them okay so in this case uh, it the dot to allow them to rotate is mainly depends on the creations of this layer of fluids okay so this fluid itself will uh, we call it as a lubricants okay when you start to rotate there will be a frictions but then after some time it will create a layer of fluids okay in between them all right and they these fluids will now act to uh, lower down the frictional resistance and at the same time when we apply this kind of lubrications okay there will be a heat generated where it may uh, due to the rotational okay it will carry away okay this heat okay so it carry away the heat, heat generated okay so in some of the case you can see that uh, this is the the kind of plain bearing okay which you can have a buff of lubricants okay inside okay to to always uh, like uh, lubricate them right so uh, for a general bearing okay we can separate them into uh, the what we call the force okay that act on the bearing okay so we can always separate them into the radius okay the radial directions okay along the radius of the bearing as well as the thrust okay the force acting in the axial directions of your uh, bearing okay so this truss is along your shaft okay so you may have your shaft over here okay so, and your shaft is rotating so it's along your shaft directions okay so we can categorize the the uh, bearings okay into two uh, in two way okay so whether it's based on the load directions okay which have we have mentioned the radial or the the thrust directions okay so we will call a radio a uh, bearing when it uh it is designed to carry most of the load acting in the radial directions whereas for a thrust bearing okay the bearing itself is designed to bear or to carry the loads okay mainly along the axis of rotations right so this is uh, very important when uh, let's say uh, you have a bearing okay if we put it in this directions okay where your shaft is in this directions right so when we rotate okay your bearing is over here therefore in this case the load due to the gravity or whatever it is is acting along the directions of your radius of your bearings okay so most of the load will be carried in this uh, radial directions okay so in this case we would prefer a radial type of bearing okay whereas in the truss bearing you may have your some kind of uh, sometimes the the shaft will be uh, located or we will put it in the vertical way okay so where you have a bearing here right so therefore because of this okay the whole 
weight of the bearing now is acting in this direction okay along the axis of rotations therefore in this case we would prefer the truss bearing over here okay so it depends on on the type of load that acting on the bearing all right so that's why uh, to analyze the force acting on the bearing is important okay at the beginning okay to identify what kind of bearing you need to use all right also we can categorize them based on the contact okay so the rolling type of contact which depends mainly on the steel ball or roller okay to minimize the rolling resistance and also uh, the sliding contact okay which we call it as the plane bearing as we have uh, seen previously mainly depends on the two two layers which will be separated by the lubricants later on right so because of the rolling have a, a lower resistance therefore to start the rolling contact will be much easier than the sliding contact type all right so therefore as we can compare between the advantages and the disadvantages between the rolling contact with the plane or the sliding contact bearing this rolling contact bearing will operate okay or have a low starting and running frictions okay but then at the very high speed then it will be uh, less uh, advantage all right because of the contact or the movement of the roller or the ball bearing is remain there okay so you still have to roll it okay and at the same time because of there is a contact between the roller and the and the sliding uh, yeah, the rolling of the ball or the sliding of the ball at a very high speed there will tend to be a, a higher noise right then also uh, this rolling contact have a better ability to withstand with withstand a shock load right uh, accurate okay in the shaft alignment okay and also uh, we can have a lower maintenance okay because there is no lubricants uh, required in service they are usually small in dimensions okay reliable easy to mount and and uh, erect and also is clean because not involving a lot of lubricants okay required okay but then uh, the disadvantages will include like a uh, low resistance to shock loading okay uh, then also a uh, higher cost okay more initial cost and complicated bearing housing okay design okay so this housing will will be how you want to put this bearing and your shaft together right you, you cannot hang in hanging in the air okay so this is the complicated part right so uh, this is the general constructions of a rolling contact bearing okay so it can be a ball or a roller so you can have a ball inside or a roller inside okay so there will be an inner race okay inner side race mounted to the shaft okay outer side race okay outer side okay usually uh carrying by the housing so usually you want to mount it okay this outside to the to to other static part right it's where you have your mount uh your housing okay and the inner part usually to your shaft right okay. uh, i think better draw it here so you will have the inner side to your shaft right so again remember your shaft can have a shoulder right so that it is uh, always connected uh, to your bearing okay inner race okay so this is the inner race outer race right in some cases if you want you can always reverse them okay the shaft on the outside okay 
the housing on the inside okay but then the design will be a bit more complicated it depends on your uh, requirement okay the, the design of your housing how you want to mount it okay then there is a retainer to there is a retainer over here okay to keep the ball or the or the roller at the proper distance all right so in internally if you uh, check there will be a ball okay separated at the a proper distance okay so that the ball will not all connected at the same place okay so there is a retainer to contain each of this ball and the roller right so there are various kind of uh, ball bearing okay uh, there are single row okay which fish notch okay angular contact double row okay this when we have two ball bearing then it we we will have this uh, ball bearing to carry more loads okay because each of this ball will will carry one load okay it's disputed now right similarly if we use roller because of the contact area is larger then then the ball then usually this one will be able to carry higher loads okay allows you to carry higher loads okay? this one is the self aligned aligning a uh, ball bearing where this ball now you can see that because of this angle itself meaning to say this whole sections okay we can move in this directions all right okay so you can allow some kind of uh, alignment in between them okay so as we have uh, discussed previously there is radial load trust load okay so primary applications of bearing is to carry this radial load okay mainly radial load in some cases we may need to carry the truss load okay and also a little bit of misalignment capability all right so it depends on uh, the applications okay you can always uh, select the bearings okay according to the type of load and the misalignment capability that you need all right so this is the table uh, obtained from uh, bearing manufacturer okay so you can always go to any bearing manufacturer when you want to uh, do the selections of bearing okay so you just go there and there is a, a catalog or manual that you can always download okay so from there you can see what kind of uh, bearing that you can use okay suitable for different applications okay for example if we mainly need to carry a lot of radio load then this this uh, several bearings type will be more suitable okay but then if we need a little bit of misalignment capability then among this this will be okay all right others will not allows you to have the misalignment capability right so in that case you may want to select the spherical roller type of uh, bearing okay so from there you can move on to the sections that uh, describe more on the type or the dimensions of the spherical roller uh, produced by that uh, manufacturer right so generally uh, the bearing have a destination uh, a code or destinations okay so we only look at the last two digit okay so is if the last two digit uh, usually start with zero four okay onwards so this last two digit you just have to multiply by five okay you will get the dimensions of the ball okay so this is your ball or your inner race uh, diameter okay so bore is the the hole inside the uh, hollow things all right so you will see that this dimension will be equals to 20 okay 5 multiplied by 0 4 right so this is the general uh, way of their putting the code or uh, on the bearing itself all right so you can also see the truss bearing the now you can see the truss bearing the construction is slightly different okay because main load is acting in these directions okay so therefore instead of separating in the radial directions you can see that now they are separated 
in this way okay so this is one layer okay you have the roller or the ball with the retainer okay so you can see now this is the retainer okay to separate all the balls uh, together all right and then there is another layer okay so this balls will keep rolling at the bottom right so you can see different layers okay so as we can expect from this case it will be able to carry the truss load better okay because all the loads will be now going down directly to the ball all right so generally uh, when we apply this truss bearing the application speed will be lower than 2000 rpm right because of a lot of balls okay uh, there will be a large movement between uh, all this ball and when it, we spin at the high speed then there is a possibility of all these things will move away right there is a central figure force acting out so therefore generally in this case uh, the speed will be limited okay for for high speed centrifugal force okay we can see that the ball will be forced out right? so in that case you will just have to use the basic uh, ball bearing the radio type okay because you don't have much choice all right uh, also uh, because of the difficulty to design the mounting some cases uh, if your applications doesn't require you to integrate the the parts together all right where you have a lot of space then you can consider this kind of mounted bearing okay because the manufacturer also designed the mounting for you all right directly so this one you can directly mount it to your ground or machines whereas this part you just directly uh, go to your shaft all right so the mounting is properly designed with sometimes you want to ink uh, put grease okay and other things okay so it's properly uh, designed so if you don't need to integrate the whole thing inside right then you can use directly with the mounting right so this is the mounted bearing type okay basically inside the bearing is the same with uh, whatever you see previously okay but then they already designed the, the mounting for you all right to apply it you want to mount it direct to the ground or to the wall or to whatever it is all right depends on the the way it, you want to apply the bearings so when we try to select the bearings uh there are several factors okay but then uh first thing you have to see the radial load okay the truss load and the misalignment as we have discussed but then after that now we have to check okay what is the dynamic radial load okay so generally uh this dynamic radial load we can always multiply by the dynamic service factor all right so meaning to say uh this load itself uh let's say you have a shaft okay with your your bearing right acting over here right remember previous uh, lecture we talked about finding the moment right so you have the moment uh, diagrams and so on so from there at the same time you can also during uh, getting this uh, moment diagram we have calculated the reaction force okay acting on the bearing right so this reaction force will be our uh, radial loads okay acting on the bearing okay so different positions of bearing will give you different reaction force right so usually we use this multiply by the dynamic service factor so depending on your applications if it is a uh, uh, low load okay short load or whatever it is you will apply it accordingly all right so this is the the easiest way to find it okay we will not talk about the actual when it rotates what is the load okay so we just based on the static first all right so based on this the selections of bearing is now mainly depends on the catalog of the manufacturer all right so how to uh, get the 
the catalog from the manufacturer you just have to uh, search right so you can always do a searching okay and from that searching itself uh, you will be able to get something uh, for example the manual okay so this is a type of manual okay I have Google you just type the if you know the manufacturer name then you just type the manufacturer direct go to the manufacturer uh, website then from there you can see the manual okay directly the type all right okay the bearing all right then from the bearing you have the bearing diameter okay different type of bearing open types shield type and so on okay then from here you can see there is a dynamic equivalent load and the static equivalent load right so we will come back to this uh, in the later part right so as we can see here there is a basic load rating the CR and so on okay so this is what it means by this okay basic static load rating okay so this basic static load rating is regarding the static load okay so this static load because even though the shaft is not rotating okay there is a weight or whatever is that act on the on the bearing so therefore it will cause a kind of uh deformations okay if the load is too high okay so even though it is to the ball bearing itself the ball itself okay when it comes to a load okay very high load then it will start to deform okay so original line it become deformed okay a slight deformations will cause the the bearing uh to have like a permanent deformations okay because it's already exceed the the material the u strength of the material of this ball okay so it will be permanently deformed in this way and when it start to rotate it will produce a lot of wear right so therefore we try to uh, reduce this kind of uh, load okay therefore that uh, catalog will tells you what is the basic static load okay that you should uh, consider all right not more than that static loading all right if it's more than that then it will cause this kind of a uh, problem okay then another one is uh, the dynamic load rating so in this dynamic load rating itself it's about uh, the life of the bearing okay the previous one the static load rating will be about uh, the deformations okay the permanent deformations whereas this uh, dynamic load rating is about the life of your bearing okay because when it's keep rotating they will be subjected to a fatigue okay under the high contact stress so all this ball bearing will fail after some time okay so this life uh this life or we call it rated life okay so we denote by l10 okay is about uh we take 1 million revolutions okay revolutions okay and how many of the bearing will survive it's just a statistical uh uh data okay that 90 percent of the bearing will sustain 1 million revolutions at this load okay so that is the meaning of this okay at this rated load right so this is where will be useful statistically that we can select a ball bearing that can last for a certain number of time right that's why in uh, your car or whatever they will recommend you to change this and that according to time okay or most of the time is according to the distance you travel right so you can always estimate from there right so how we can estimate the life of the bearing uh, we will use this formula okay it's the C which is the greater load right remember the load rating okay so the dynamic load rating so you can always get this from the manufacturer catalog right so depends on which one you select so if the diameter is 10 then you can the inner diameter is 10 then you can select let's say one two three depends anything will be good all right so you just select maybe uh, let's say you want diameter is 10 
Therefore, diameter is 10. You have the CR, okay? Basic low rating, okay? Given by 1720 and 840, okay? Depends on uh, what you want, all right? So it changed according to the design of your bearing, okay? So you can always select, all right? So when you face a questions of selections, so you just have to list check okay which one you want and you can code the bearing number right so you just code the bearing number 6800 okay if you want with the show with the shoe so you just put zz at the back okay so it becomes 6800 zz okay that's all okay so that is the bearing number that you have selected okay in your design right so all these calculations will be uh follows after that all right so here you can see that uh this c will be uh, obtained from the manufacturer uh catalog okay but then you can see also here we have this formula right so this formula is what the manufacturer actually use okay to get this c rating okay this uh this constant okay so again uh for this k okay this constant you depends on the type okay for rolling roller bearing the k is 10 over 3 for a ball bearing the k is 3 right so this will be non okay from your manufacturer this one is fixed depends on the ball bearing this one is fixed okay then this one is your load right so your design load so what kind of load you actually uh assign okay to be carried by this bearing so from there you can know what is your life okay of your bearing all right so this life will be given at, in terms of uh revolutions okay from there you can always calculate so generally uh you want to achieve a certain design life okay depends on your applications all right so general uh design life okay for different applications okay so as we have I've mentioned the C is depend on the manufacturer uh, data, right? After you have select the bearing geometry, right? So it's very important that you do a cycle, okay? Means uh, do a iterations. You may select this one, okay? Try with this and check whether your it meets your design life or not okay if not then you we progress with another size okay no choice this one cannot then we get a higher one all right then so on okay so this is how we can do the design it's not directly one time you get what you want right because you want to minimize the size okay you have a size constraint and so on all right so this is the manufacturer reference that you can go through Okay, so before we end this sections, okay, this sections, okay, about bearing, okay, then we go through an examples, okay. Let's say you have a row contact, row angular contact ball bearing, okay. Uh, the bearing will carry a radial load of two thousand eight five hundred newton and the axial load of thousand five hundred newton, okay. So assume shock load okay so based on this the service factor will be 1.5 right we have to find what is the uh, life rating rating life of the bearing right so what we do we get we check the service factor right then we would uh, get the dynamic equivalent load right so this will be since this is in the radial direction so we will use the radial part right multiply by 1.5 right 1.5 okay so this is again you can check this sections okay dynamic equivalent load right so you can see that it's actually given by this x f r plus y f a okay radial force multi plus the co component of the axial force okay it depends on this ratio okay generally if this ratio okay the axial force over 
radial force is lower than this number okay this e number then the our calculations will mainly depends on the x f r okay that's why in this in this part okay we only have f r and our the service factor itself okay we will multiply that okay plus a uh, multiply with the service factor itself right okay? so therefore it's uh, 3750 newton Okay, so from the table, then we can always calculate the, we can always get the basic dynamic loading from the bearing. Okay, so this is the bearing number, okay, that we intend to select. Okay, so from that uh, ball bearing, we can check, okay, what is this uh, basic dynamic load rating. Okay, then from there, uh, we can calculate using our previous equations okay to obtain the number of revolution revolutions that it can sustain okay before it start to fail right so from this we can always check what okay whether how long it can last right so generally uh for example this is a compressor and the compressor speed is 1800 rpm okay and we in that case one hour it can rotate in this number of uh, times okay therefore it can last for 26,000 hours actually okay so this is how you can uh, design whether it's suit uh, uh, good enough or not so it's up to you right so therefore if uh, there is a bearing failure okay keep occurring though then therefore uh, you can always check back what is their their bearing models okay and then from there you check okay what is the load okay it can sustain and from there you can estimate okay why the bearing keep failing and so on okay so this is the design stage at the same time this information you can use it for uh, to identify why a bearing you keep failing okay sometimes the, the the design may not uh, proper all right so there are several considerations during selections okay the bearing that have the most convenient geometry that you want okay the cost and the availability right then also uh, how you want to mount it okay such as the shaft seats tolerance housing ball diameter and and so on right whether you want to include seal or other things right so there are other considerations after you put in the bearing okay because the bearing itself is just one component all right you still have other things all right so now uh, we will check whether you have any questions so if you have any questions that you can put it there Okay, so far no question yet. All right. Again, uh, for your informations, the okay, so far no. So, uh, for your informations, when you take the attendance using your mobile phone, okay. Uh, before you click the link turn on your gps locations before you sign in because now the system have updated okay such that it will uh, track your gps location when you sign in all right so this one is to facilitate the university to obtain the data previously they always asking you with the survey and so on right so they upgrade this so that they can trace your locations okay and so on right so it will reduce the the survey hopefully in the future right so no then we will move on all right mm. okay. so for the coupling and seal so what is coupling and seal all right so the coupling itself come from the word couple meaning to say you want to bring two 
things together to become couple right so this coupling is the functions of it okay to, to bring two components together okay to hold them or to move them together right so you can see that uh it's also act as a mean to locate a machine elements okay what it means by locate here remember previously we talked about locate okay so locate is mean just like a uh, locations right so in a shaft itself okay when we when we design we will say the bearing is at this uh, distance we have a pulley at this distance we have a shelf okay at this distance we have another bearing at this distance okay so all this distance is a uh, locations right it's relative to a certain point or coordinates all right so we call this as locate right meaning to say we fix the positions of that particular uh, part all right so this key and coupling have these functions to locate okay so if we have this uh, so called a shaft okay of your maybe pulley right so we want to make sure it doesn't move away right so we call it as to locate okay we use a key to lock it okay to locate it right so the key is to place is a are placed in the interface between the shaft and the hub okay so you have your shaft a shaft okay and this part your component okay in general uh, we would say it's a hub right or any uh, power transmitting elements okay where you want to fix them together right so that they move together and and it doesn't move away okay so what we can do we use different kind of key okay suitable for your applications right so what is the key so as we can see if this is a shaft okay this part is a shaft okay and outside is your hub the hub can be very big okay which carry your maybe a gear okay and so on so how to connect them together we put a pin okay for this example is a pin key in between them so whenever this shaft rotate so this power will be transmit to this pin and because of this it will this pin will push this hub to rotate together right so this is how you bring them to move together right so this is uh, a kind of hub okay this is a hub okay without the 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 gear or whatever it is okay but sometimes if it is big then you can incorporate them together right so now if we have the square or rectangular parallel key then it's very straightforward the cross section is rectangle right the cross sectional area is rectangle right then also if it is tapered key then it's the key itself now is tapered okay with a dimensions all right then also we have a, a gib head okay so this is a gib head right so this part is the gib head all right so that uh, after you slide in okay so this is the key where you slide into the uh, I would say okay so maybe I draw all right so this is your your hub okay inside you have your hole right so your shaft may be outside here all right let's say this is your shaft okay so in between them you put in this key all right so to put in this key you can either cut a slot right so let's say this is a tapper type right so you cut the slot so you just push this in okay so it's easier with the tapper side okay but then if you want to remove this one it's very difficult so sometimes they will provide or they you use this uh yip head key meaning to say you you this machines or this part intend to be removed and repaired many times all right so they will provide this one okay with the yip head right so that you can put something okay to remove this key out okay before you can remove the other part together right so this tapper part as we say it have the ability to locate meaning to say uh when we push in okay this will be fitted uh 
properly meaning to say it doesn't allows you to move anymore after you fit in right so you have been not in use, using hammer so everything is very tight so that this one will not move okay because of the frictions between the object okay or the fitting between the, uh, the object right or the component itself right so this is a pin key okay so you just insert the pin type right so re rectangular a pin type right so just insert into that right a uh, woodruff key okay so this is the woodruff key okay with a circular part so how to manufacture you just uh cut a growth inside your shaft right so this one after you put in you can see that uh it is extruded okay so this is the this is the how should i say okay uh this is your shaft let's say okay this is easier all right so this is your shaft okay so after you cut in this growth okay and you put in this uh woodruff key this woodruff key actually ex extruded out okay so meaning to say this part you will connect to your hub all right so it will still uh, act as a key okay so you have to put in this first before you slide into your hub all right so same thing with the spline uh, type okay it's uh, more complicated all right so you, uh, geometry like a gear you just slide them in so whatever you move it will move all right so other methods of uh, locating will include pinning putting a pin inside okay Okay, instead of uh, putting the key in these directions, okay, now we put the pin directly, okay. So we have pinning, there is key lab, uh, hub to shaft connections, okay, without uh, other polygon hub, alright. So it depends on the geometry of your elements to fit them in together, alright. There is a split, a tapper bushing, okay, set screw, the one you use a screw, alright. So you just use a screw. Okay, so this screw when you screw it, so it will tighten to to your shaft, right? So you may need several screw, the screw set type, okay? Tapper and screw, press fit, okay? So this one directly fit in, okay? So you may, in this case, sometimes they may hit, they may cool down the the dimensions or the part, okay? That so that it is a string, and then you fit in, right? So then it will be released out uh, to the original temperature then it will become uh, much fit right and so on so also molding directly uh, also uh, we will talk about the shaft coupling okay because the shaft is limited by the length okay usually up to seven meters so in order for you to couple two shafts together then uh, we may need a coupling right so Coupling is to connect two shafts together at the end of the shaft. Okay, so the shaft coupling are used in machinery for several purposes. The first one is to provide connections of the shaft. Okay, and to the motors. Okay, for so this one is the very typical. Your motors or the generator have their own shaft. Okay, and you want to connect to your to your shaft right so in between this you need a coupling right to couple this together right then uh, the sh this coupling also may sometimes provide uh, misalignments okay uh, reduce transmission shocks okay introduce protections again load all right so this one overloading is again something very important okay because when uh, this machine suddenly uh, jam okay or stuck then your motor will continue to rotate right so if this is stuck meaning the load is very high okay so if uh, if this is not designed properly okay meaning to say this not this coupling is not act as an overload okay it's connect directly to the shaft what happens is that when this become jam okay your motor you keep providing power it will burn your motor all right but then uh, if we have a properly designed shaft okay 
shaft coupling meaning to say this one will act like uh, if you carry a certain type or certain amount of load right so what happens is that when this jam okay or stuck the load will increase what happens is that this one will keep rotating okay until a certain uh, force or load that it, this shaft coupling can carry it will start to disconnect okay disconnect in the way like let's say if it is depend on the key right so if it depends on the key okay, you have two shafts together you put a key inside okay if your key is properly designed okay meaning to say when the load increase your key will now start to break okay your key will start to break so that this one will keep rotating or keep jam but this one you will allow to rotate okay therefore it automatically disconnect just like a fuse okay in your house right uh, it's also uh, should not have a projecting part okay to avoid uh, accidents right? so the a coupling is termed as a device to make permanent or semi-permanent connections okay where a clutch permits rapid uh, connection and disconnection so they are uh, some similarity but then the function is is uh, slightly different okay coupling we provide almost permanent connections whereas you have a clutch okay you have a clutch to connect the shaft and disconnect the shaft the shaft easily right so a good shaft coupling generally have uh, this uh, ability like easy to connect and disconnect okay not like a clutch not not as easy as clutch but then you still want it to be easy to maintain all right then it can able to transmit the full power from one shaft to the others okay perfect alignment able to reduce the transmission of short load and there is no projecting part right uh, there are two main groups of shaft okay the first one is the rigid coupling and the second one is the flexible coupling okay so the rigid coupling as the word say rigid so therefore they don't allows you to have uh, much misalignment so they must be perfectly aligned right so these are the three types of uh, rigid coupling right whereas for a flexible coupling they allows little bit of misalignment okay in terms of angular and the right lateral directions okay so these are the three types of um, flexible coupling right so you look into them all right so this is the rigid coupling as we can see they are coupled between two parts through the bolts and nuts okay very tight so you don't allow any mis uh, misalignment between the the shaft okay so you may have one shaft here another shaft over here okay no misalignments allowed okay much whereas for the flexible uh coupling you can see that the hub now is separate into two okay and they have some kind of spring or whatever flexible materials that allows them to bend okay between them okay so you can slightly uh move this one in these directions okay so that it it still works all right so that is the flexible type of uh, coupling right this is the universal joint all right where you use pin to provide emotions okay so you have double double uh, universal joints all right then also you have the retaining pin so this retaining pin is to again to locate okay to prevent the axial misalignment so meaning to say in the axial directions you don't want it to be running away okay especially when you have a spring and other cap okay so it will tend to move in the axial direction so what we need to do we will put a retaining pin okay to make sure it this part will not move too far away all right so that is the axle misalignment all right so others way to locate your machines we include collars okay shoulders okay. remember in the shaft designs we have shoulders right spacer and lock nut right so this is one of the uh, common common shaft coupling right 
we have the slave or we call it a muff coupling right slave or muff coupling right so uh, what we can see is that it depends on the key okay the idea is still the same but this is using a key right so what happened is that you have this uh, shaft okay two shaft now separated okay but going into this couple right and this couple is connected to one single key right so that they move together through this single key right so this is how you can design a slave uh, coupling right just insert the key okay then these two will move together so make sure this is long enough to cover the two shaft right so in order to design for this slab or this muff coupling uh, we can consider two uh, two conditions right so generally we first we have to calculate what is the torque transmit okay through this uh, slab okay so this slab is just a hollow or hollow uh, cylinder right so because of this hollow cylinder it will carry a certain amount of torque or the power or energy so you can always calculate that with the torque equals to pi over 16 multiplied by your shear stress of this material okay what is this material okay and then multiply by the larger diameter my power 4 minus the smaller diameter d right so this is d this is capital d right power 4 divided by d right so this is using this formula you can calculate what is the torque actually transmit through this uh, couple okay or this left then uh, for the key itself now we have to design such that the key works as we want okay and the key will fail due to two possible conditions what is sharing the second one is crushing all right so as i mentioned previously you can use the couple cut the coupling as uh, overlap protections okay this is where you need to design the key properly all right so if you know a certain amount of load that actually tr being transmit okay so anything larger than that you want it to be disconnect okay therefore you have to calculate properly so that this key will break when the amount of torque is very high right so the key will actually uh, fail due to two conditions either by shearing okay you cut it off okay just like you know, a scissor since this is two two part rotating okay two part this one rotate this way okay and the inner part okay it should be rotate this way but then uh when we put this key uh if you like a uh, scissors okay it cut it off we call it shearing right so what is the shearing of the key okay you can calculate using this formula or the crushing of the key meaning to say you compress okay since this is being compressed okay one part to the other so you this section is actually being compressed together so we call it as crushing of the key all right so you can design such that they they can transmit the amount of torque you want but not too high okay higher than that it will break all right so this is the dimensions of your key the l is the length okay so for this uh this design you can see that the length of the key is is 178 okay not one one zero plus one nine zero okay because this is including the jib head but then the actual part that actually transmit the power is this length right so we just take one one seven eight as your length okay then this w is the width of your key okay for crushing we use the thickness okay half of thickness okay then this is the the shear stress and this is the compression stress or strength of your material of your key right multiply by the d right so by using this formula you can know what is the torque it can carry maximum torque it can carry by your key itself okay so remember this is the maximum uh, torque it can carry 
before it fell okay because this is the permissible shear and permissible compression strength of your material right so we have also a a flange coupling okay a flange coupling uh, which we have the flange okay with the bolt itself bolt and nut so this is the flange okay so your you can see this part okay the flange itself okay flange out okay so there are several types again unprotected one so in the unprotected flange couplings you can see the bolt and nuts exposed okay not protected all right so again you still need the key right so generally you need several uh, bolts maybe three four six and so on okay depends on the torque that you want to uh, transmit okay then uh, to design this you just follow this guideline all right you have the d as the diameter of the shaft okay other dimension you can use uh you can identify by using this formula like d the capital the the outer diameter okay equals to do d okay others part okay all the dimensions will be uh given according to the diameter of your shelf okay you can design accordingly for this uh for this flange coupling right then the design is similar only for the protected type you have this extruded part okay to protect the bolt and nut so that it's not exposed okay so this one uh, is more safer okay especially when you are working and you are carrying a, a name tag or whatever hanging on your neck all right or tie or whatever it is okay. so, uh, so it will be reduce the accidents okay of things hang uh, get stuck and keep rotating and it brings to the accidents all right so how to design everything is the same as the previous only this extruded part you can take uh, as 0.25 of the diameter of your shaft right so also we have the marine type uh, flange uh, where it only depends on one side of uh, uh, securing of the boat okay so with a tapered dimensions all right so here the design of the key is to remain the same right the important part is uh you need to know the usual proportions okay and then check for the sharing and crushing that's all okay the two formula that you used previously okay you have to check these two okay then from that you also need to know what is the material and the length of the key right so as we have seen okay we usually take the length of the key equals to the length of the hub okay not the total length including the the yip head right so to design for the flange okay so you can consider similar things okay you not go through in details for this okay same thing design for the boat okay how many numbers of boat required okay you can calculate accordingly right so now uh, we will talk about uh, some case uh, in the flexible coupling we allow some kind of miss uh, alignment okay of the shaft so we can see that uh, there is a misalignment in terms of axial directions okay axial directions there is also in the so-called vertical direction the radial directions okay misalignment in in these two okay then there is an angle right and the last part is combinations of any of this okay it will become uh, the synergized misalignment right so this kind of uh, misalignment can be handled okay when we apply suitable flexible coupling right so uh, what we can see we can several types okay universal uh, 
Oldman Oldham and Bush pin flexible coupling, right? They are uh, trying to prevent all these things, okay? But the general, the most common one is this one, right? Because uh, in general, when we couple a something, um, our machines to a, to a generator, let's say, okay? Therefore, you have the shaft connected, right? And you want to couple this together, right? So, these things will move in or out, or when you uh, when you assemble them, there is a miss uh, alignment in the locations. Okay, so when you design for this kind of uh, situations, you may you have to look into the account of this possible of. Uh, uh, misalignment in the radial directions because this one may, may also move in and out okay during the operations okay so in many case the direct electric drive to the machine tools you need a flexible coupling okay to permit this to permit this right so how it can be solved okay this is a bush pin uh, flexible coupling as you can see now we include a bush okay so this is a bush bush is basically again it's a hollow cylinder okay so this is the hollow cylinder that you put in here right so this bolt now is connected to this part right the the bush part okay and the other side of the bush is connected to another flange okay so meaning to say this flange now is able to move in and out slide in and out along this okay similar to this right so whenever your shaft move in and out because the motor shaft is also moving in and out there is some kind of vibrations in between uh, them when they rotate okay so this will allow it to move in and out okay in these directions okay okay so this is how we implement the uh, bushed pin uh, flexible coupling okay to allow the misalignment in the axle directions okay so for the all hand uh, it's very similar to the universal joint but then it's only you can see that they include one middle part okay so this there is a slot okay so this slot will allows it to move in the up and down directions this one in the the other directions okay in general when you combine them together you allows a, a kind of a misalignment in terms of uh, radio okay radio directions okay something like this okay so you can allow this kind of misalignment okay using the all hand coupling right but not angle okay because when it's angle then this one will drop off right so for the angle you may want to use the universal coupling type all right which depends on the ball between them right okay. then also uh in the fleet or the liquid industry or the oil and gas industry then sealing is very important okay because you are dealing with liquid okay so the seal will be used to protect critical machine elements from contaminations okay you don't want the water to go into the electric motor part right so you have this kind of uh, contaminations we call it contaminations okay you have a electric pump okay that pump you need to seal it before the water actually go into your electrical circuit okay while allowing the transmissions or rotations or the translations of your machines element right so you may have a wiper type okay so that your pistons can move in and out but then water will not go in all right the u cup seal the o-ring okay the lip seal okay the wall type Okay, so there are different type of uh, seal. Okay, so that whenever you put this, the what, whatever liquid or vapor will not get through here. All right, same thing for this. Okay, it will wipe out, wipe it out. Right. So the type of uh, rings depends on the conditions. There are static conditions. There are allowing relative motions conditions and the 
uh, continuous reciprocating conditions okay so you can see that the static conditions the o-ring is fixed right so you just put it there this construction is fixed so it doesn't allow doesn't allow uh, or have any much motions over here okay except maybe just a simple vibrations right so therefore this is to protect the oil or leakage okay from that okay whereas for the diaphragms you may have diaphragms billows and wood to allow relative motions or in some case you have the reciprocating then you have the lip the u or v whatever shapes uh, available okay of the seal that's suitable to protect your uh, elements from getting contaminated okay when i say contaminated means get uh, dust or water or whatever is that you want you intend to protect all right so now the seal are used where contaminations must be excluded okay especially when there is a critical part okay some sensitive part or maybe a machines that uh for example now uh, you have a clean room or maybe some parts where your machines must uh, doesn't allows like a uh, dust or whatever go into your the ventilator okay now we need ventilator in the hospital so that ventilator may have this kind of things okay to protect the air or whatever leakage okay so that is the critical part some some part uh, for for example in your hard drive okay the typical old type of half hard drive there is a spinning uh, part inside okay you don't want to have any dust inside okay then again you have to protect them right then also lubricants must be contained within a space sometimes okay then uh, you don't want the lubricant to leak out okay then you may, you need to provide a sealing okay then there is a pressurized uh, fluid as well where you want to put a seal like uh, maybe your watch that can go into go into water or your handphone that can go into maybe 10 meter depth of water okay so inside there is a ceiling okay you need to do a seal right so the parameter affecting the choice of the seal may include the type of the fluids right the pressure the type of motions the temperature the degree of the ceiling you need okay how much ceiling you need okay how long you expect it to last okay the nature of the solid and the service okay how easy you want to remove or replace the worn seal okay so the type of seal materials the typical one would be uh, the normal elastoma or maybe a rigid material okay you can also use plastic or metal okay you, it still work right uh it's also mainly depends on the weather okay or the environment where you act okay whether it's a weather resistant petroleum fluid resistance and so on right so in the large machines okay like uh, in the oil and gas uh, industry they may use what we call packing okay packing is actually uh, maybe like a rope okay it's like this okay okay it's not it's not like the o-ring or the typical rubber type of seal that you you see okay it's just a rope okay where inside this rope is actually made of various material like leather cartons and so on okay twist together so that it's a uh, tough and water or lubricants actually not getting through them right so what how this packing is used is actually uh, you may have your machines okay with your shaft okay let's say this is your shaft and there is a liquid inside okay that's going to flow out right so what we do in the oil and gas industry or whatever it is this packing uh, rope okay I would say it's a, in the rope type you just strap them okay wrap them together okay and then you you have to design a cap 
so you have a cap okay so this cap will screw inside okay so that you pack all this uh, rope that you winded just now okay let's say this is your shaft okay you wind it properly okay okay now you you put a cap okay that push this in okay so this one will become squeezed okay and become like fat all right so that they're compressed and fill it all the gaps so water will now not going out okay so this is a, a way of uh packing okay especially when you deal with a uh, large machines okay producing a uh, uh, proper rubber seal may not be viable all right so this is the easiest way or cheaper way to to seal it right so that's all for today right so if you have any questions you can put it okay we will wait for two minutes before we end the sessions any questions you can ask in the chat Uh, for your informations, uh, the weightage, okay, the weightage for your final exams and the test, okay, that's we have discussed previously. Uh, there is a slight changes there. All right, uh, you can refer to the course synopsis that I have provided in the Google Classroom. There is slight changes, okay. Uh, where they the faculty decide that uh, the previous assessment of the assignments and other tests should remain the same as previous only the part that we have uh, for the final exam we, we will replace it with the test therefore uh, from that part itself you will see that I have shift all the marks now from the final exams mainly to the to the test now right instead of di distributed to the assignment and other parts okay so you just have to take note on that okay uh, and also you have taken the first test okay the second and the third test okay will be replacement of your final exam all right so you separate we will separate it into two tests okay uh, that we will carry out uh, maybe in july or early of august right uh, so from there uh, you will see that the questions will be similar to your final exams okay in terms of the level of difficulty okay and also the instead of final exams usually three credit hour you have three hours then in this case you will have 1.5 hours for each of the tests okay so that's all i guess for for your informations okay there is this uh, small changes there right so if i think no questions uh we will end this sessions if you have further questions you can always ask in the google classroom all right so good luck for your upcoming tests okay so bye bye see you